Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the Mr. Fix-It channel. Got the old cross card in the shop again. Gonna do a little bit of upgrades. Stay tuned. This cross cart that I lovingly call the Junkyard Dog 2.0. This is the predecessor of the 1.0. If you're familiar with my channel way back, uh, I built a Honda Odyssey. It was a Odyssey frame. But here's, a, here's a picture or a short video clip right here. This, uh, this thing has been beaten to death. I've gotten quite a few miles on it now. I've, I've noticed that the engine gets pretty hot. This is an air-cooled engine. I've pretty much destroyed all of the airflow that this engine would need to survive in a normal world. I can get about 10, 12, maybe if I'm easy on it, 15 miles before this engine starts to get too hot. I've recorded temperatures of 350 degrees on this cylinder head and it does start to pre-ignite and it, does, it is just not happy. I've already done a few mods to this. I didn't record any of this. Th this is uh, a piece of Schedule 40 PVC. I built this air intake because these pod filters here, which they look cool, but they don't flow air real well and they do not filter the dust even if you soak them in oil. So I took these off and I added this thing. For one, it's a cold air intake, so I'm drawing air from you know this area. These filters was drawing warm air that was wafting up from back behind, so that was creating a heat problem. So the cold air intake definitely helped a little bit as far as the engine overheating. It actually helped the engine perform better. You would think that having something like this on there, the engine would perform better. And I believe the reason why is for one, of course, cold air, and two, these are more uh, more of a velocity stack, these pipes here, so it kind of funnels the air. These these CV carburetors really need a specific, you know, vacuum signal or, you know, the airflow signal through them to work properly. So this was a tremendous upgrade right here, just in as far as air fuel and, you know, cooling. I also added some baffles in this muffler so I don't drive my neighbors completely insane. The next step here is an oil cooler. Now this engine does not have any provisions for an oil cooler whatsoever. Although this engine was used in several other models like the FZ um, uses the same base engine family along with the, the YJ and some of the other old Yamaha bikes use this same engine style. That being said, those other engines were oil cooled. And the oil cooler on those engines was, I'm, it's looking like it was an afterthought really because what this is here is this is an oil filter adapter. This goes against the engine block, oil filter adapter goes here and threads into this. This threads into the block, the oil filter threads into this. And it has provisions for oil cooler. So I'm gonna see if this will adapt to that engine and see if we can't get an oil cooler on this. This is what I have to work with. This oil cooler is probably smaller than it needs. So I can, I'm gonna upgrade this maybe later if I can find a bigger oil cooler, maybe a transmission cooler or something. But this is what I got for now. These are the lines. So they have the proper flanges to, to make all this work. I do have a bit of a space issue back here. You can see there's the oil filter right there. So there's not much room in between the fan and the engine. I would like to put the oil cooler back here. Ideally, you'd have it like up here directly into the wind. But the problem with that is right there is the front tire and it will launch rocks at the oil cooler. And I don't really want to bust my oil cooler out on the trail. So I think I'm going to add the oil cooler behind this fan here in between the engine and the fan. So we'll see what I have to do to do that. Uh, I think the easiest way to get in there is to pull the seat out and then pull that fan off. So I got all this room to get in there. So let's do that.
Let's get this fan out of the way. Let's see, I should probably look at first. So right there's the oil filter. Here's my oil cooler. It just won't fit in there. It's very close, but not gonna fit. All right, I thought before I got too carried away, I'd pull the oil filter housing off and see if that adapter is even gonna work on here. So there's this strange nut in here that I've taken loose. The other adapter come with its own nut bolt, nut bolt thing. And right, I do have a new O-ring for this. Get some oil on it real quick here. Flip that in. Okay, this is the the nut bolt thing and washer come with this. Let's see my input and outputs are on the sides there. Alright, so that threads in, that's good news. And then the filter housing should thread into that. Alright, that fits in there good. Now I just thread the nut that I just took out, nut bolt thing, in there. That'll allow me to put the oil filter housing back on it. So now it's just a matter of figuring out how I'm going to get the oil cooler to fit in between here and the lines. Okay, so I just spread my fan brackets out here just a little further. That fit in there nice. I'll just re-drill the holes for the fan. I got the oil lines, I cut the crimp off of them and I re-bent them so that they're pointing out this way. These lines here I'm going to bend down. Hopefully they'll meet up right there. I got to build some kind of bracket to bolt this from. And hopefully I'll be able to sneak my oil filter housing back in here with that line in the way. We'll see. But uh, that's what I got so far. That's pretty quiet, isn't it? Here's the oil filter and the uh, oil cooler all attached in there now. We got it warming up. Don't see any leaks. Everything looks pretty good so far. All right, so it's the next day. I'm going to do a cold start on this. This thing is dead cold. It's 57 Fahrenheit. That's a 14C. So I'm just gonna fire this thing up and let it sit here and idle and warm up. And uh, we'll see if that oil cooler is gonna have much effect at all. Try to do this in the same spot every time so we can see what's going on here. So it's about 200. That's 101C. You see the oil cooler down here. The oil's still pretty cold. That's the input side. Let's check the output side. Definitely having some effect on it. This is without the fan blowing on it. See the temperature's coming up pretty quickly.
So 250. To... What's it about 240? All right, let's turn the cooling fan on. Give that a few minutes and uh, we'll see where it goes. Let's see what the intake temperature is. About 55, 60 degrees. Definitely bringing the temperature down. That's what the hot side looks like, the old cooler. Temperatures coming down. Let's see how hot it is after that rip. So we'll go back over here where our point was. 330, 340, 340 degrees. Yeah, see it's getting hot. 
but it was hotter before the oil cooler. So I'm just gonna crank this thing back up. I'm gonna turn the fan on and see how well the oil cooler's doing. Yeah, it's definitely having an effect. See how fast it cools off here. It's already cooling down pretty quick. Let this run for a minute or so and see how well it cools off. Yeah, it's actually cooling it down pretty quick. See what the air intake temp is 80. Ground 76. But definitely got cooler air going in along with that oil cooler. It's going to help a lot. Yeah, it's not the answer to all my problems, but it's definitely helping a lot. Well, the old cooler is having an effect. Is it going to be the solution to all my problems? Uh, probably not. Is it going to help? Most definitely, it's going to make a difference. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing, and I'll catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching.